Hello everyone and welcome to ZTV Live. Today's Thursday, July 9th, and I'm Susan Mulligan Fleischman and I'm very happy to have you join us tonight for another edition of the Virginia Amos Show. Virginia's guest tonight is Bill Hendrickson, former president of the Delray Citizens Association, who's now embarked on a project uh, that's going to reveal and explain the history of Delray architecture and, and its, Del its Art Deco um, designs. So stay tuned for that. That'll be here in just a minute. But first, I'd like to do a couple of words from our sponsors. This episode of ZTV Live is sponsored in part by Taste of Asia, which includes Japanese, Chinese, and Thai food. Try their excellent sushi or one of their specialties, including eggplant and garlic sauce, pineapple fried rice, and hot and sour soup. Mention the zebra for 15% off your order. We're also sponsored by Dishes of India in the Bellevue Shopping Center in Alexandria, winner of the Zebra Reader's Choice Award for Best Indian Food. Check their website for daily specials at DishesOfIndia.com, available for curbside pickup or delivery. Mention the Zebra ad for 15% off your order. ZTV Live is also sponsored in part by Tempo Restaurant, Alexandria's best kept secret on Duke Street in the West End. Specializing in Northern Italian and French cuisine, award-winning Tempo has indoor dining again. Visit TempoRestaurant.com to see their menu, including beer and wine to go. Mention the Zebra 10% off meals on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Whoops, there we go. If you'd like to sponsor ZTV Live, please send us an email at ads at the zebrapress.com. That's ads at the zebrapress.com. And now I'd like to just bring you a couple of um, important news items tonight. If you know of any families in need, certainly of food, please let them know that there is another food distribution this coming Saturday. Alive, hosting a truck to trunk event for residents. As before, shelf stable groceries will be given away from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. or until supplies run out. Drive or walk to the parking lots of John Adams Elementary on Rayburn Avenue or Cora Kelly Elementary School on Commonwealth Avenue. Residents are encouraged to drive through for pickup. Residents who choose to walk should bring their own bags and a cart to carry their food away. Everybody is west asked to wear a face covering and maintain a distance of six feet from others. In related news, Alive and Hunger Free Alexandria are also accepting donations from the community to support their efforts to meet the needs of Alexandrians hard hit by COVID-19. Please see our story on the zebra.org for more details and for important links. Another important story is the American Red Cross is in ur urgent need of help. The pandemic has resulted in a severe blood supply shortage. Yes, there are less people out and about meaning fewer life-threatening injuries. However, the other side of that is that there is not as many people donating blood right now. To encourage donation, the Red Cross has joined forces with Wonder Woman. The, the organization announced yesterday that DC Films will give away replica props that look exactly like ones used in the upcoming motion picture, Wonder Woman 1984. The Red Cross usually has enough blood to last for five days, but not right now. And in this country, someone needs blood every two seconds. Like the pandemic itself, the supply challenge is unprecedented. To donate blood in Virginia, residents must be at least 17 years old or 16 with parental consent, weigh at least 110 pounds, have an appropriate iron level, and wait a certain number of days after a recent donation. The time frame depends on specific blood type donated, in other words, whole blood, red blood cells, plasma, or platelets. Technology can save time as well. The Red Cross uses Rapid Pass, where donors can complete pre-fill their health history information before their appointment, saving up to 15 minutes. Please see our story on the zebra.org for more details and important links. And now I'd like to introduce Virginia Amos. Hello, Virginia. Welcome back to ZTV Live. Hey, Susan. It's great to be with you uh, again this evening. And, um, you know, when it seems that walking 
has become the national pastime um, over the past few months. I can't think of um, a better reason to have Bill Hendrickson with us. Welcome, Bill. Uh, it's great to be with both of you. <laughs> Bill, and, we're going to get to, we're going to talk to Bill about a few other things first, but just to tee this up, Bill has put together a um, walking tour of the historic Art Deco buildings in Del Rey. Um, and that material is going to be available on the Zebra website. But let me back up here just a little bit. Um, Bill, I think we really first came to know each other when you were president of DRCA and I brazenly raised my hand and volunteered to chair the Del Rey House and Garden Tour. And um, that was kind of the the beginning of uh, of our association. And since then, uh, you went on to do a lot of things. And one was um, an architectural conference um, that you put together that resulted in the Delray Pattern Book. So tell us a little bit more about that, and then we'll we'll segue into the into the walking tour. Well, I, I planned the conference. It, it took place in 2012 at the George Washington Middle School, and it was called the Delray Historic Preservation Conference. And it it came about because I was concerned about um, losing some of the buildings that we have, some of the historically significant and architecturally distinctive buildings that we have in the neighborhood. And and at, at the time, I was particularly concerned, and I still am very concerned about the um, these wonderful warehouse buildings on Monroe and um, Leslie Avenue. I'm sure most of you have seen them. Um, the one on Monroe was built first by a very distinguished um, architect in Washington, D.C. It's now the home of Swings Copy. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's got some wonderful Art Deco um, architecture, and and that really was the the whole uh, beginning of it. And uh, we got such a amazing turnout at the conference that the city took note, and the planning staff hired um, a company to put together the Delray Pattern Book, which is essentially a a book about house styles in in the neighborhood and it's aimed at homeowners, developers, builders who are interested in maintaining the historic character of the neighborhood. And so when they're doing renovations or additions, they can you know, take a look at this book and uh, see what has been built before, what is existing and, and what can be done. And, um, but the other thing that the city did was that they hired uh, a architectural historian uh, named Heather McMahon to research um, all of the, um, the 16 Art Deco buildings in Delray and to prepare applications for uh, possible nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. Um, and so that was pretty significant. I think the city was basically saying, hey, these are pretty significant buildings, both historically and architecturally. It was significant, and I remember, although I was not at the conference specifically, mm -hmm. I remember being really surprised by the turnout you had. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Lisa Quant and Christine Hess worked with you on that, and I think everyone was really pleased at just how much interest there was in the architectural history of right, Delaware. Right. And you can be very happy to know that um, Last fall, a young couple came up before the land use committee looking for a variance on for a house they had bought in Delray and some uh, improvements they wanted to make. Mm -hmm. They referenced the pattern book and mm -hmm. said they had spent time poring over it and uh, working with their architect to stay within the parameters um, of the original house, which right. is really nice to hear because not everybody does that. Right, right. Well, there's no legal protection for really any building in Delray except for the few that have historic um, or other easements. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you think about the city of Alexandria caring so much about its history, but 
beyond Old Town and Parker Gray historic districts, there's no legal protection or very little for Correct. any building in the city. I mean, any of them could be torn down tomorrow, really, including the ones in Del Rey. And, and you know, one of the ironies of what has happened here with Heather McMahon's research is that one of the buildings that she researched has been torn down and rebuilt. And which one was that? And that's 1800 Mount Vernon Avenue. That's um, Arland the former Arlandry Flores building. Okay. Uh, it's now a, basically a four-story um, apartment building. Right. Um, right. And but, but the interesting thing is that the city, even though there's no legal protection for that building, the city staff took a look at it and they said, you know, we'd like to keep at least some of the elements. And I think it's a good idea for you to um, maybe mimic or echo the original architecture of that facade, at least. And I think they did a really very good job in doing it. But of course, um, and, and I think it's a fairly distinctive facade now on the Mount Vernon Avenue side, um, but um, you also lose the historic authenticity, you know, when you lose these kind of buildings. Um, part of the conundrum though is you either have um, something like the uh, in Old Town where historical preservation is sacrosanct mm -hmm. and and homeowners are very constricted in what they can do on the sides that face the street. Right. Or you have nothing. Mm -hmm. There's not. There isn't anything in between, mm -hmm. which, which I know um, in Del Rey has always been kind of one of the hesitations about mm -hmm. trying to declare a historic district because. It the requirements are just so stringent, right. and depending on who's on the review board at any given time, it can get quite ugly. Right, right, right. The only um, we don't have any legal protection per se, but the only um, uh, help that we have really is the 2005 um, Mount Vernon Avenue Business Area Plan, mm -hmm. which. Uh, put a strong emphasis on preserving the buildings along Mount Vernon Avenue in particular, the um, Art Deco and other historically significant buildings. Um, but still it has no legal protection. I mean, the staff can, can press to uh, any developer to say, we'd like to keep this facade or we'd like to keep the building. Um, and um, you know, to some degree they, they, can, they can make that work. But um, in a lot of cases, the developer to develop, we can say, well, I've got the right to do this, so I'm going to do it. I don't care what you say. Exactly, which is what can and does happen. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it's my understanding um, that that the Delray Citizens Association also contributed money towards the completion of this survey. Is that correct? Or am which I thinking? Survey, which survey are you talking about now? The one that Heather did. Uh, yes. Yes. And that, that was that was really an important uh, thing for the association to do. Yeah, I, actually, I, I think that what what we I'm not sure that that the DRCA contributed to that, but what they did contribute to was um, um, when Ron Cooker was president a couple of years ago to a resurvey of the town of Potomac yeah. National Historic District, um, and so they were able to hire. Um, um, someone to do that, um, and the city now has an app that it developed on its own that that makes it makes it easier to uh, survey the uh, you know historic districts, and it's being used actually in other parts of the country. But we also got a, a grant from the Historic Alexandria Foundation that helped us with that as well. That's right, we did, and I actually was there the night we received that. Um, so let's talk a little bit more or specifically about this walking tour. Um, now, I, I should say for our listening audience, Bill is not actively giving those tours. Um, not as of yet. <laughs> not as of yet, not as of yet, so stay tuned. Um, and right now, uh, the material is simply in text form. Um, like I said, it's gonna be on the Zebra website. It's also gonna be on the DRCA website so that you can download it and you can have that material and you can take yourself out for a walk um, 
up and down Mount yeah. Vernon Avenue. But Bill, if you'll tell us um, a little bit more about some of the buildings, I know that people sure. would like to have an idea sure. of where to start. Yeah. I, you know, I based um, the tour on, you know, largely on the research that Heather McMahon did. And the actual applications that she developed are on the city's website, mm -hmm. um, which can give people much more in-depth information. Um, if you go to the um, city website and then to the Department of um, Planning and Zoning, they have a historic preservation section. You can find all of the applications there. But what I tried to do, of course, is make this more interesting and accessible to, uh, right. <laughs> to <Thank> people. <laughs> and, and to highlight, you know, and, and to highlight various things. And I, I have a, you know, amateur's knowledge of architecture. I'm a big, big fan of architecture and I've studied it. But so I, I pointed out various things that, um, um, you know, I think that people would be interested in. I think that, you know, people, um, you know, we take these buildings for granted in a lot of cases. You know, we don't really appreciate them as perhaps as we as much as we should. But you know, um, Art Deco is one of the um, you know one of the most distinctive architectural styles of the 20th century. It was particularly the rage in in the 20s and 30s. But mm -hmm. it it you know it was being built up until the 1950s. And, um, you know, Alexandria itself has um, relatively few of these buildings, Art Deco buildings, but a lot of them are in Delray. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's so funny. You mentioned the 20s and 30s, and I always associate, rightly or wrongly, I always associate Art Deco with the jazz age. And so I'm thinking like of flappers and long cigarette holders and the Charles yeah. and Prohibition. And I don't associate any of that with Delray. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it's it's kind of a um, it's surprising to realize that we right. do have buildings from that time period in our little community here. Yeah, well, you know, Art Deco was seen really as a um, the essence of, of modern uh, modern the modern world. Um, and um, you know, an example, a good example, I think, is the. Um, George Washington High School, now the middle school, as well as what is now the Verizon um, building, which is a, basically a public utility building um, mm -hmm. on the avenue. Um, you know, originally the Chesapeake and, and Potomac Telephone Company, you know, then part of the Bell system, then, um, you know, as then a, a major public utility in, in the country. And in both these cases, uh, in the George Washington School case, um, that building was built in that the original building in, in 1934 1935 um, and that's a section of the building that's closest to East Glendale Avenue and it was originally a t-shape but um, that was built with funding from the federal government during the depression hmm. um, and you know 70 percent of all the school construction in the country between 1933 and 37 was funded by the federal government and that time uh, Art Deco was really big. I mean, it, it was featured in the majority of the buildings built during that period. And it was considered really modern and innovated, innovative and optimistic. And it fit into the, the Roosevelt administration's view of what the country should should become. Where um, we should be going, yeah. And the same thing, I think, with the Chesapeake and Potomac building, you know, now the Verizon building. Um, it could use a little bit of work um, in terms of um, maintenance, cutting, cutting some of the shrubs, and, and but uh, it's a very elegant building. It's a very monumental building. In fact, it, it's kind of a, it's and it's a very classical building too. It's got a real classical feel. Yet yeah, it's got Art Deco elements. And um, you know, at the time, um, Alexandria was very, very proud of that. Um, and when the city's bicentennial anniversary came up. Um, in uh, 1949, 200 years, um, the city put out a pamphlet and they featured that building. Hmm. And they said, here is an example, you know, a great example of how mm -hmm. Alexandria is keeping up with the times. Our telephone building. <laughs> So it, it you know, these buildings are, you know, not only architecturally significant, but they, um, they, they also are historically significant for the development of the community itself. 
um, you know, a lot of the buildings on the tour, you know, represent the transition from Delray being kind of a residential neighborhood to being a commercial uh, neighborhood. And then, you know, there were two modest apartment buildings on the tour. They're both on East Glendale Avenue. They're directly across the street from the George Washington Mm -hmm. um, Middle School. And uh, they're very, very modest, but they have um, these distinctive details on them. If you ever walk by to take a look and and the tour goes into what those details are. But these are also historically significant in that during the 1930s when they were built, a lot of people were coming into the Washington DC area and these apartment buildings were built for them. You know, this was during the depression, people were looking for work, the federal government was hiring and they needed housing, and that's how they got built. But they're still they're still intact today. They yeah. haven't really changed much at all. They've been very well preserved, and so it, it they're they're you know little jewels in our community. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, tell us a little bit more about the Swings Building. Well, <laughs> they um, you know it, it, it's really interesting because. Um, you know, Heather McBann, the, the um, architectural historian, probably, I mean, I think really a lot of these buildings, you know, perhaps more than any, but these are warehouse buildings and swings and four buildings on Leslie that, uh, you know, they, they serve kind of a banal purpose, warehouse buildings. Today, I mean, you know, you can tell what they are. They're just four walls or rectangles. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they show pretty much nothing. But, but here, you know, the builders decided you know, we're going to do something different. We're going to be special here. And um, um, it, it's partly, I think, a reflection of the fact that uh, they were built by a guy named James Giuliano, um, who um, he, he built all five of them. And uh, his father was a stonemason um, and who emigrated to the United States in the late 1800s. And, you know, James, um, you know, kept up that stonemason tradition and incorporated it in these buildings in these wonderful um, decorative details um, and uh, it uh, I think you need to take a look at all of them but the the swings building in particular was built by a very prominent uh, Washington DC uh, architect um, William St. Sir Barrington and the other four were built by others but they were very much uh, based on on their design um, I, I, I'd like to read what Heather McMahon had to say about these buildings because it, it, it it's um, because she says that you know not only are these some of the finest examples of Art Deco in the area, but perhaps rare examples of industrial buildings in, in which so much attention has been paid to architectural quality. And she said that Barrington's design monuments lies from 501 East Monroe, which is where Swings is, and its banal purpose for the use of decoration and exquisite detailing. And looking at those buildings, I think that you can really tell that if you take the tour. It's so lovely. Um, how many buildings in total are on tour? Well, there are 16 buildings, and uh, it includes the one that uh, um, was torn down and rebuilt, and I put that on there to try and you know, draw a contrast between what existed and uh, what is there today. Okay. And there, so there are the five warehouse buildings, there's a school, there's a public utility building, there's the two apartment buildings, and then there are other commercial buildings. Aren't so uh, down there where uh, Cheese Teak is in that yeah, block, the, that the part Palladian, of the- Right, the Palladian building. Um, and that's a pretty interesting building, Art Deco building. It's got very, very nice details. And a lot of biz- businesses have been there. It was built by um, a man named um, Palladian. And he was a major developer and builder and, and civic uh, leader in Alexandria. Um, he also built the building um, just to the um, north of that building. Um, where the First Agape Baptist Church is down. And that's okay. another good example of Art Deco. Okay, and, and we know that the, the, that stretch of buildings, um, at least part of it is for sale. So 
Um, I know the land use committee has been keeping a, a, a close eye on yeah. what's going yeah. on there. Yeah, but that's a, that's a good building. It, it you know one of the uh, distinctive uh, features of um, Art Deco architecture is um, how it stressed verticality mm -hmm. with towers and um, other projections that went above the roof. And the Palladium building is a good example of that. The George Washington Middle School is also a very good example of that because you know you take a look at it from the Mount Vernon Avenue side, the original building, and it it's a long it's a long vertical, you know, it's a long rectangular building, but they, they built in, you know, towers and this striking central pavilion, you know, plasters that go above the roof line. And uh, so they, they really created kind of a very vertical, striking, monumental building there. And it, it you know, the most famous um, art buildings in the, in the country are, you know, skyscrapers, you yeah. know, particularly like in New York, you know, the Chrysler building and the, the, um, Rockefeller Center and these amazing towers, but that was one of the uh, the features of Art Deco. Um, the other, of course, was decoration. Um, very unusual decoration, too, very uh, unique, and um, it it varied all over the country, and it reflect it it referred back to different traditions in different parts of the country um you know there were uh, abstracted symbols that were used from native american people um and uh, delray has some nice ones too um perhaps not as exquisite as <laughs> <laughs> some other buildings elsewhere but they're still very very good um examples and and well worth preserving i think we we revel in our modesty, don't we? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this: Do all of the um, owners or occupants of the buildings in Delray know that they are in a historic building? Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, I told you that the uh, the purpose of of doing the nominations. Uh, or the, the applications for, for nomination of the historic register was um, to do it, of course. And it, But only three of the building owners agreed to actually submit the application. Uh, three of the, I think there were 13 owners. And, um, you know, it, it's only an honorific designation. Right. It, right. it has no legal legal status, but... I mean, I can understand why they would not want to do that because if you, if your your building is suddenly registered on the historic district as a as a national register historic building, um, people say, "Why are you tearing that down?" Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a legitimate concern. But um, I think we recognize, and the city staff certainly recognizes a. Uh, you know, historic and, and architectural significance of a lot of these buildings. That doesn't mean that we should keep them all, but there's certainly buildings, I think, that are real treasures. And one of the, I think, underrated buildings is probably the, um, you know, the former uh, Bean Creative building. Uh -huh. Bean Creative just sold its building. And um, that building, it, it, it seems like it's very, very modest, but um, it's actually, you know, quite a nice building architecturally. Um, and it's certainly going to be either redeveloped or added on to now for the new owner. But um, that's an example of Art Deco, but it's also an example of what was called Streamline Modern. And it's a very, you can either call it a variation of uh, Art Deco or you can call it a style of its own. But it, it developed in the 1930s and um, it got its name from the design of really streamlined automobiles and mm -hmm. airplanes and cruise ships um, that were very, very famous at the time because the air streamed over these these uh, these things. Is that and, where the uh, green trailer comes from? Uh, yes, that's that's it, yeah. exactly. Okay. Stream, streamlined modern. And um, so it, it's different from Art Deco. It has less decoration, um, but it, instead of the verticality, it, it emphasizes horizontality. Okay. If you look at the um, the former being created building, which is actually the um, uh, what I would call Bowman's drugstore, because it was built by 
uh, Clayton Bowman, who was a pharmacist, he and his wife lived upstairs in the building, and um, it was built in the streamlined modern style. But it's got a curb corner. Um, it's got um, these windows that run continuously around the corner on the second floor. And it, it's got some other really beautiful features. Um, and I think the one in particular that um, I really like is the entrance to the building. It's very unique and uh, people should appreciate this, but um, it's got this curved banded um, aluminum canopy that's supported by fluted Doric plasters that are also made of aluminum. Oh, good. So take a look at, take a close look at that. That really needs to preserve, be preserved. That sounds like it. Well, Bill, we're kind of coming up on our time to uh, say good night, but I just want to thank you so much for the work you've done on this and for calling our attention to these architectural gems that are right in our neighborhood and that I dare say most of us pass them every day and are just, you know, we're not even thinking about um, the significance uh, or the time period or anything that is associated with it other than the business that occupies it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, you really uh, created something that I think everyone in Delray uh, should applaud, right. uh, as should everybody in Alexandria who's interested in, ar in architecture. Now, do you have... Um, something else up your sleeve uh, <laughs> well i think that uh, I, I i you know we're, we're thinking a lot of these days about historic preservation in delray and the land use committee has begun working to discuss particularly saving um more of the residential architecture you know delray um has a national historic district the town of potomac but um a lot of the neighborhood has been vanishing because yep. of redevelopment and um, homes are being torn down more and more um, major renovations are you know taking place and we're losing some of the more distinctive um, um, buildings from the late 1800s and early 1900s when you know all of the subdivisions that that go into the um, town of potomac national historic district like like delray and st elmo those subdivisions <laughs> Um, you know, the buildings are being lost. And so we need to think about whether, you know, what we can do to preserve them. Can we um, extend some kind of um, preservation protection? Can we do something instead of a, like a BAR? Can we do a historic preservation district light, a conservation district? These are things that other communities around the country have done. But we need to do something pretty soon. I think we need to um, make some uh, recommendations to the city for them to consider. Well, I I know that, like you said, the land use committee has talked about it. We've we've met with you and Rod, and um, it is a concern. And it will just it will be interesting to see what happens going forward. But I think that what you have given us in this walking tour is um, a great way to call attention to our history. Yeah. And to gather people in and get them excited about what we have and what we have yet to preserve. So thank you again for being with us. Um, I have a feeling we may do uh, something else on this again. Um, and just as a reminder, everyone, the walking tour is available on the Zebra website as well as the Delray Citizens website. And I promise you that as soon as Bill tells me that he is available for personal or group walking tours, <laughs> we, will, <laughs> we will do a special notification. And who knows, maybe we'll, uh, Susan, maybe we'll go out and walk with Bill uh, one day and do um, a lot of it would be great. We do just a live video up and down uh, Mount Vernon mm -hmm. Avenue for That's a little a great bit. Idea, for sure. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, okay. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. It would okay. be fun. So uh, let's just get July over with because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. to and, um, and it would be nice if we could do it without masks so we could 
see each other. So we, we may have to wait a few months, but mm -hmm. we'll put that on the calendar. And um, I'm going to say good night now. And Bill, thank you again so okay, much. For you're welcome. Was, okay. Uh, great. Okay. You, Susan. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Bill and Virginia, of course, for uh, a wonderful um, discussion and really introduction into the details that make Delray such a such a neat neighborhood and uh, and Art Deco, I love uh, the word optimistic to describe that uh, style of architecture because I, um, I think that that is, a, it, it is, it's a little bit whimsical, it's optimistic, it has a kind of a fun uh, geometric aspect to it. So uh, it was um, nice to see the artwork right there under, under our noses this whole time. So thank you so much, Bill. We look forward to getting that uh, tour. It's not on the Zebra websites yet, but it will be um, as soon as we can get it up there. So we uh, be sure to keep an eye out for that. And uh, thank okay. you, everybody, for another wonderful week of turning into ZTV Live. Um, we'll be back next week. Steve Houck has his amazing show on Mondays, um, Living on Music. So be sure to tune in for that. Ralph Pelusa will be back here on Tuesday. Jane Collins back here on Wednesday. And... Um, I believe Virginia will be back uh, the following week. So um, anyway, stay tuned. We'll see. Uh, we'll see the um, lineups and, and, and take a look and make sure you're you're tuning into ZTV Live. And always, please let us know what you'd like to see on the show. If you have any good news, acts of kindness that you've seen that you'd like to share, we wanna we wanna share it for you. So please don't be shy. Reach out to us and let us know what you'd like to see because we could easily come on ZTV Live and share it with our viewers. So I hope everybody has a good Friday and a wonderful weekend. And until then, remember to be the good news in someone's life.